Hi, I'm John Cranton with GMFice.com. We're going to take a look at the 2014 NFC East in football, all four teams. But first, Jim Feist has an early bird special. If you want to get aboard, you get the entire college and pro football seasons, all for 99 bucks. Just sign up before August 1st. Call Jim's offices, 1-866-841-1655. All right, the NFC East for 2014. Boy, it's been an unpredictable division. Dallas won it all. The division in 2009, that was followed by the Eagles, Giants, Redskins, and then the Eagles last year. It's a division stock with talent and some good quarterback play. That's why Las Vegas win projections totals for this season are all between seven and eight and a half for all four teams. We're going to start off with the defending champion Eagles, eight and a half wins. Vegas has them projected. Chip Kelly, boy, he really impressed in his first year, bringing in that no huddle attack from college and probably going 10 and six, winning the division. Oddly, the Eagles are four and four straight up and against the spread at home, but six and two straight up, five and three against the spread on the road. Have to be impressed with what he did with his no huddle attack, as few could stop it, and it definitely worked. Ranked ninth in the NFL in passing with 257 yards per game, tops in rushing with 160.4 yards per game, fourth in the NFL in points scored with 27.6. What we didn't know was if the Eagles had a quarterback, but the boy, they hit the jackpot with 25-year-old Nick Foles, a quick study, finishing with 27 touchdowns and two picks, 2,897 yards passing, chipped in 221 yards rushing, throwing running back LaShawn McCoy, just over 1,600 yards rushing, 5.1 yards per carry, and this Philadelphia offense is going to be potent and balanced again. Eagles wide receiver Jeremy Macklin, he's on the mend from last year's torn ACL. Two years ago, he had 857 yards receiving. While they do lose speedy wide receiver Deshaun Jackson, rookie wide receiver 6'3", Jordan Matthews has impressed in camp. He was taken in the second round, 42nd overall out of Vanderbilt. The Eagles actually love his combination of size, speed, and intelligence because the kid loves to study film. Now, Chips Kelly's initial plan is to play Matthews in the slot with Macklin and Riley Cooper lining up outside. Now, the Eagles' defense, because of that no-huddle attack, they have some weak overall numbers, 32nd against the pass, 12th against the run, a little misleading because of that no-huddle offense puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Plus, the Eagles love to score early, and other teams have to pass the ball more. you got Fletcher Cox and Cedric Thompson. They were rock solid up front on the Eagles' 3-4 defense, a very strong tandem up front. And Cox ranked eighth on the team with 66 total tackles, three sacks, while Thornton ranked sixth with 78 total tackles. And in the 3-4 defense, you need speed at linebacker. So the Eagles in the draft took Louisville defensive end Marcus Spears in the first round. He's not a power guy, but he's got a lot of speed and agility, probably a good fit for what they're trying to do. Now, you might think that with all that no-huddle offense and bend-but-don't-break bend defense, that Philly would be worth a look over the total well they were but just nine and four over the total but it was most noticeable on the road where they were six and two over the total now the eagles are on a 16 and 10 run over the total going back a year and a half along with an 11 21 and one spread run now the roll schedule for this year doesn't is probably the toughest they're going to be playing at the 49ers the colts the cardinals the texans and the packers after the bye in week seven, they're going to play six of their final ten games on the road. In second place, we'll take a look at the New York Giants. Vegas has them projected at seven wins. Now, the Giants are off a 7-9 straight-up campaign, but they started 0-6, followed by an impressive 7-3 run straight up, 6-4 against the spread. The problem started with the offensive line, a place where the Giants hadn't invested a lot of high draft picks over the years, kind of caught up with them a little bit. Quarterback Eli Manning was sacked 39 times through 18 touchdowns, 27 interceptions. And the ground attack for the Giants was useless, 29th in rushing with 83.3 yards per game. So they made some changes. They add tackle Charles Brown, guard John Jerry, and guard Jeff Schwartz as free agents. Center Weston Richbrook comes in. He's a rookie from Colorado State, taken in the second round. You got running back Peyton Hillis is back, but had just 247 yards, 3.4 yards per carry. They still like running back David Wilson, a former first-round pick and an ACC Player of the Year in college. Syracuse offensive tackle Justin Pugh was taken in the first round a year ago, so they have added some youth and some new blood on that offensive line. Eli Manning, he's coming off ankle surgery, and he's healthy now. He needs help alongside wide receiver Victor Cruz, a terrific talent in 998 yards. 
They took first-round pick Odell Beckham, a wide receiver from LSU. He was the 12th overall pick to try and help out. Plus, seven-year wide receiver veteran Mario Manningham is also back after two years in San Francisco. Now, the defense struggled early last season but got hot down the stretch. New York Giants finished 10th defensively against the pass, 14th against the run, but there are changes going on. Linebacker Justin Tuck led the team with 11 sacks, but has moved on to the West Coast. Defensive end Jason Paul, Pierre Paul, he has had two and six and a half sacks in the last two years battling injuries. Linebacker Jonathan Beeson comes over from the Panthers, but broke his foot in the summer and had surgery. That's a huge blow. So he's not going to be around for the start of the season. Maybe back too late, maybe back late September. They also have cornerback Jaron Hosley. He has been suspended for the first four games for violating the NFL, NFL substance abuse policy. So the, there are concerns with the Giants' defense for September. The secondary does look improved, though, with outstanding safety. Andre Roll, along with cornerbacks Prince Amakamara and Dominique Rogers. Cromarty. One of the weak spots the last two years has been road play for the New York Giants. Last year, 3-5 straight up, 4-4 four and four against the spread. Two years ago, they were very similar, 3-5 and five straight up, 3-4-1 and one against the spread. So for this season, the Giants are going to be opening at the Detroit Lions. And then they've got really only a couple of tough road games after that at Seattle, Philly, and the Giants. And keep in mind, the Giants are on a 9-5 and five run under the total. Third place, we're going to take a look at the Dallas Cowboys the Vegas odds makers have Ve Dallas projected at eight wins. Now, the last three years, Dallas has been projected at eight and a half and eight wins, and they finished up eight and eight in each of the last three years. Expectations are always high with this team, but Cowboys really didn't have that impressive an off season. Jason Garrett's offense was below average last year, 14th in the NFL in passing, 247 yards per game, but just 24th in rushing. 34-year-old quarterback. Tony Romo had 31 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, 3,828 yards. He's not a problem. He actually had a very good season, and he was only sacked 35 times. That was seventh best in the NFL. That's really outstanding for an offensive line that was rebuilding like the Cowboys were last year. He got first-round pick Travis Frederick. He had a solid rookie season at center and his back, and Tyrone Smith continues to make his case as a very strong left tackle in the NFL. And they added some depth, too. They took tackle Zach Martin with the 16th overall pick out of Notre Dame. Running back DeMarco Murray is back. 1,121 yards. He stayed healthy and averaged 5.2 yards per carry. So really, this should be a potent and balanced passing attack. Even with knucklehead wide receiver Des Bryant, 1,233 yards, 13 touchdowns last year. He got reliable tight end Jason Witten, 851 yards, and speedy Terrence Williams. Now, the defense for the Cowboys, that was the problem. An absolute train wreck last year, last in the NFL under one-and-done defensive coordinator Monty Kiffin. They ranked 30th in the NFL against the pass, 27th against the run. So they have a new coordinator in Rod Mar Marinelli, their third defensive coordinator in three years. Now, the news got... Worse when talented linchpin middle linebacker Sean Lee hurt his knee in the summer, likely done for the year. So the team's going to have to fill that void from within. You got Devontae Holloman, you got Anthony Hitchens, and Justin Durant. They let linebacker Demarcus Ware walk, so in addition, the secondary has some concerns. Brandon Carr did not have a great season, and Morris Claiborne has really not justified Dallas's decision to take him number six overall in the 2012 draft. Now, the schedule for the Cowboys, boy, it's going to be starting strong. They're going to be hosting the 49ers, then they got two road games at the Titans and the Rams, then they're home against the Saints and Texans, and then at Seattle, very difficult opening schedule here for Dallas. The Heat could be on the coaching staff with a bad start, and that is a possibility. All in all, the offense doesn't look uh, that to be a problem. Looks pretty good, but the defense is a big question mark in so many areas. Keep in mind, Dallas Cowboys are on a 6-3 and three run over the total. Last place, got to look at the Washington Redskins. Vegas has them at seven projected wins after a disaster last year. They went from division champ to just 3-13. and 13. In fact, they got outscored last year by 144 points, dead last in the NFC. The Washington was third worst, in, and that was also third worst in football. Naturally, they cleaned house because of the disaster. So 47-year-old Jay Gruden is the new head coach, the offensive coordinator with the conservative Cincinnati Bengals. Okay, the Redskins fans want to see what he can do first, but it is worth mentioning that when he was offensive coordinator the last three years in the playoffs, the Bengals went 0-3, and the offense did nothing in those playoff games. 
He inherits a team that was fifth in the NFL in rushing, 135.3 yards rushing per game, 16th in passing. That was a run-oriented zone read offense, but Gruden says he's going to run the zone read at times, but that's not going to be the primary play, so it's a little more of a pro-style attack that he's bringing in. Quarterback Robert Griffin is going to have to pass more. He did run for 489 yards last year, 5.7 yards per carry, second on the team. 16 touchdown passes, 12 picks, just over 3,000 yards passing, 60% completions, and he was sacked 38 times. Running back Alfred Morris is a terrific young talent, 1,275 yards last year, 4.6 yards per carry. He certainly is a force. To help this new passing game is going to be speedy wide receiver Deshaun Jackson from the division leading Eagles. Wide receiver Pierre Garcon was terrific. He's going to be 28 when the season starts. And he's off a campaign with 1,346 yards receiving. So really, he and Jackson could be a dynamite passing duo if they open it up more. Rookie tight end Jordan Reed also showed some promise. He caught 45 passes and three touchdowns before suffering a concussion. Redskins defense, though, boy, they were really bad. 20th in the NFL against the pass, 243.5 yards per game. 17th against the run. They ranked 18th in total yards, but 30th in points allowed. Gruden already is committed to keeping the 3-4 defensive scheme. Brian Arakpo and Ryan Kerrigan, a terrific outside linebackers, the duo combined for 18 and a half sacks. And at least the thing is, though, they allowed at least 27 points in a game 10 times last season, more than 30 points in a game six times, and more than 40 points three times. And now the road schedule for Dallas, not pretty at all. They're going to be playing at the Texans, Eagles, Cardinals, Cowboys, Vikings, 49ers, Colts, and Giants. Well, you're throwing a home game against the defending champs, and Washington is probably going to struggle to be a 500 team. And remember, if you want to get that early bird special from Jim Feist, you can also get his preseason early bird special. 29 bucks gets you all four weeks of preseason, including his preseason game of the year. Just call Jim's office at 1 866 841 1655. Make sure you check out jimfeist.com for more pro and college football previews. <laughs>